and the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge is here and I've had it for a couple of days now which is obviously not enough time for a full review but it is enough time to give you guys an unboxing and my first impressions after 48 hours. Bounce. So the Galaxy S7 Edge isn't a complete redesign and instead is more of a refinement over last year's S6 Edge. That is by no means a bad thing because Samsung got a lot of things right last year and they only really needed to make a few changes to make their flagship smartphone better. For starters, that sharp in-hand feel that a lot of people complained about with last year's S6 Edge is now a thing of the past. It's also slightly bigger this year due to the increase in screen real estate, which I personally like, but despite that, it's still relatively thin and extremely comfortable to hold. The back is slightly tapered along the side, similar to what we saw with the Note 5, and while it's not a game changer, it does add that little bit extra to how it feels in the hand, and complements the overall look of the S7 Edge really well. The glass backing is still a huge fingerprint magnet just like before, which is kind of a bummer, but it's generally a very small price to pay for a phone that looks and feels amazing. The screen still features the same 2560 by 1440 Quad HD resolution as before, and everything still looks super sharp and super crisp, but now you get to enjoy it all on a much larger 5.5 inch display. Everything from web browsing, videos, movies, and games have all looked absolutely fantastic, and the display in general has been a total pleasure to use. It's pretty safe to say that Samsung makes some of the best smartphone displays on the market, and this beautifully curved AMOLED screen with its deep inky blacks and vibrant colors is certainly quite the looker. With the Galaxy S7 Edge and of course the regular S7, Samsung has brought back a couple of features that were arguably missing from last year's models. Number one is micro SD card expansion, which means there's no 128 gigabyte version this year, and instead you're getting support for up to an additional 200 gigabytes of storage for all your photos and video. Feature number two is the S7 Edge is water and dust resistant again, which means it'll survive the occasional spill, dunk in the toilet, or getting caught in the rain. The awesome thing about it this time around is that it's all sealed in from the inside, which means no more annoying flaps that get in the way or could potentially get broken. One of the biggest weaknesses of last year's Galaxy S was battery life, but this year Samsung has shoved a massive 3600 mAh battery inside the S7 Edge, and it has definitely done the trick. Even though I've only had the S7 Edge for a couple of days now, I can already tell that battery life is drastically better than the S6 Edge. On day one, I was able to easily hit the 5 hour mark of screen on time, which was pretty incredible, and so far I've had no troubles whatsoever getting through a full day despite snapping a ton of photos and doing some light gaming. The camera has taken a bump down from 16 megapixels to 12 megapixels, which may make some people initially think that this is a downgrade, but there's a lot more to a camera than just megapixel count, and other things like the actual sensor and image processing are much more important when it comes to overall image quality. Samsung's basically taken a page out of Google's book, and with fewer megapixels, you're getting much larger pixels, which results in better low light performance, and is helped out even further by the F1.7 app, especially when it's packing the Snapdragon 820 here in the States, and 4 gigabytes of RAM, loading apps, 
playing games and web browsing have all been extremely fast, although I will admit that I do still notice that occasional lag that's typical of Samsung phones, which is not a deal breaker, but it definitely lacks the fluidity that you may find on something like stock Android. The Flipboard home screen scrolling lag is still there, and while the delay is nowhere near as bad as previous Samsung devices like the S6 and Note 5, it's definitely still noticeable and has only become more apparent to me the more I use the device. Software has also seen a lot of improvements, especially with the Edge functionality that takes advantage of the S7 Edge's curved front glass panel. You still have all the same features from before like the Apps Edge and People Edge, but the Apps Edge now features two columns of apps which makes it a lot more useful as a multitasker and app switcher of sorts. Samsung has also introduced a couple of new Edge features like the Task Edge for quick shortcuts to common tasks, and Edge panels that can show you a variety of pertinent information like the weather, stocks, and sports scores. I'm still not entirely sold on all these Edge features as far as their usefulness goes, but at the bare minimum, it's a great way of storing apps, contacts, and other bits of useful information that can all be accessed by a swipe of a finger without cluttering up your main home screens. New to the S7 and S7 Edge this year is the Always On Display, which can show you useful information without draining the battery because it takes advantage of the AMOLED screen by not lighting up every individual pixel. Right now it's pretty limited in functionality, which can probably explain why it's not enabled by default, and can only show you the clock, calendar, or just an image if you don't care for the other two. I do like the calendar one quite a bit, and it's the one I've used the most often, but it would be nice to see Samsung expand upon this feature in a future software update to make it more robust. But that's pretty much going to do it for my first impressions of the Galaxy S7 Edge after 48 hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for the full review which will be a lot more in depth. And if you like this video give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel which is also down below. And check out the website at androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things.